This video is brought to you by Infinite Black and their Elder Dice and 5 EGM screens. Get 10% off using the code GGOBLIN at checkout or by using the link below. And by Hitpoint Press and their deck of many animated spell cards. On pre-order sale now at animatedspells.com. Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. Today we're finally bringing you our full set review of Snowbound, the latest painted mini booster set from WizKids for D&D. And this set's a little different. It brings you lots of creatures and named NPCs for Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, but it also gives us some new minis for some original monster manual baddies. One thing this set doesn't do is give us a lot of random PC minis. So this is pretty much all creatures and monsters, which is great for dungeon masters who probably already have a lot of PC minis. There are 46 unique sculpts and no variants in this set. This time though, we don't have a full case to show you the distribution. We received a box a couple of days ago from WizKids with individual minis packed in it. One of each, plus a couple of extra of the commons and smaller uncommons. And many thanks to them for providing them to us to review with you. Snowbound is out now, so let's do a quick giveaway, shall we? To enter, just be a subscriber to the channel here and leave me a comment down below telling me which mini in the set is your favorite and why. In about two weeks, we'll draw a winner to receive a Snowbound booster box. So, time to get bundled up. We're getting Snowbound in August, so let's see those minis. We're starting off with one that needs a good bit of explanation. The Chardolin Berserkers are ragged nomads who wield Chardolin weapons suffused with demonic magic. Chardolin is a non-magical crystalline material that's as strong as steel, but easier to work with and highly susceptible to enchantment, with the slight drawback that prolonged exposure to it will cause madness. These barbarians are now, for all intents and purposes, fiends explaining their minimalistic winter attire. They have a CR4 stat block in Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. This is our first of three Megan sculpts in this set. Megan are magical constructs who are encountered in the necropolis of Aetherin in Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. They're created by wizards to be silent telepathic servants, using a seventh level create Megan spell that can be discovered during the course of the adventure. The Demos Megan have armor and weapons and generally serve as guards. They have a CR of two. There are three types of Megans that can be created with the spell. The Galvan Megan are the second, and they're able to fly and shoot lightning out of their hands, which are useful abilities in a personal bodyguard or in a pop star. If your resident wizard wants to create an army of Megan, the one thing that might hold them back is that they must subtract the CR of each Megan they create permanently from their maximum hit points. And the Galvan Megan has a CR of three. The Hypnos Megan can cast the Suggestion spell at will. If it doesn't work, they aren't armed with armor or weapons, so they're fairly easy prey to foes, though they can lash out with their mind to cause some psychic damage. Apparently, wizards would use the Hypnos Megans to force their foes to surrender or withdraw, and hopefully they had a plan B if those enemies met the DC-12 saving throw. The Hypnos Megan have a CR of 1. So this one is interesting. The mini is a common medium-sized creature with the name Skeletal Sentinel, though it's clearly based on this art from the book entitled Frost Giant Skeletons Guard the Way to Queen Vasa Victon's Frozen Tomb. So for whatever reason, they took the Frost Giant Skeleton art and made it into a standard humanoid skeleton instead, possibly because we have a Frost Giant Skeleton mini in the actual Rhyme of the Frost Maiden mini set. I'm perfectly fine getting more skeleton minis though. I'll probably get more use out of it that way anyway. This one is pretty dark. You're probably familiar with the Duragar, basically the evil Underdark Dwarves. There's Underdark versions of most races. Well, when one gets out of line, they'll force them into these hammerer contraptions, which torture the poor Duragar and then are powered off of their pain to do more mining. When you're attacking the hammerer, you can attack the machine or the creature inside of it. It has a CR of 2. Most of the monsters in this set are drawn from two places. Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden is one, obviously, but the set also brings us more minis from creatures in the monster manual, like the psychic gray ooze here, though the mini is pretty much black. This kind of ooze is old, so old that it's evolved on its own to become intelligent and it's developed limited psionic powers. This tends to happen when the oozes live near psionic creatures like the Mind Flayers. They have a CR of one half. 
come on, it's a baby griffin. If you have a player who wants a pet that can grow one day to become a mount, having a griffin hatchling mini to serve as a personal Tamadachi is fantastic. In chapter two of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, you can find instructions on how Goliath PCs can attain and bond with a griffin baby. And there are multiple stat blocks to use for this little guy as he ages. And you can also just use these rules as a template to design your own pet mechanics. My conids, who are basically sentient ambulatory fungi from the Monster Manual, get a lot of love in this set, starting with the basic Myconid adult figure here. They're pretty interesting creatures who abhor violence and live in little communes where they essentially get high on their own spores. The adult here has a CR of one half. Do keep them out of the sun, though, if you want them to stay healthy. The Bullywugs will forever be the D&D creatures who seem too cute to be evil, but evil they are. Though I think they can be evil in a pretty fun way. They're almost cartoonish in their evil, obsequious ways. They consider themselves the kings and queens of the swamp, and give themselves grand titles that you can certainly have a lot of fun with. They then fall over themselves, bowing and kowtowing to their superiors, while ordering around their inferiors and in their strange little hierarchies. They appear in the Monster Manual with the standard Bullywug having a CR of one quarter. Like the Myconids, the Bullywugs get some love in this set. As do the Mephits, who are little mischievous elementals who come in six varieties, each one representing the mixture of two elements. The Dust Mephit here is a combination of earth and air. They're primarily found on the elemental planes, but they sometimes wander over to the material world to cause some trouble. The Dust Mephit can put people to sleep and blind them with a puff of, well, dust. They have a CR of one half in the basic rules. Ice Mephits represent water and air and have a chilly, cold personality to boot. While most methods are evil little tricksters, the ice methods are just cruel. They can cast Fog Cloud once a day and have a freezing breath that just plain hurts. If you end up fighting Oriel during Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, she may summon a couple of ice methods to keep you distracted, so having some of these minis by your table would be a good idea. They have a CR of one half. Oh, this is a good looking Cambion Mini, and that's probably a good one to have multiple of. Cambions are the offspring of a fiend and a humanoid. They're typically portrayed as wicked, arrogant rabble rousers. The definition of what constitutes a Cambion has changed over the years from one edition to another. Currently, either parent can be any sort of fiend, and the other parent can be any sort of humanoid, which makes me want to see more Cambion Dwarf halfling, or gnome minis. Cambions have a CR5 stat block in the basic rules. Cold Light Walkers are a type of undead creature first introduced in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden to my knowledge. They're formed from humanoids who died in extreme cold who rise after death due to the influence of the winter gods. They emit a blinding spectral light that can be directed at foes to blind them, and anyone killed by a Cold Light Walker freezes for nine days, during which time nothing can really affect the corpse. The mini looks very cool, but it does lack the intense light that it's known for. It would be interesting to see what a mini with an LED embedded in it would look like for something like this. We recently got a pretty amazing Deva Mini in the Nolzer's Unpainted line, but it's good to also get an updated painted one as well. Devas are the errand boys and girls for the Celestials. They travel to other planes, assume a form that'll blend in, and then deliver a message or complete a task set forth for them by the angels. Sometimes they'll hang out for many years in their disguised form to lend aid, provide hope, and encourage the good-natured folk around them in times of need. Then they'll pull off their disguises to have that aha! Ha! I'm really a beautiful creature with fantastic hair moment. They have a CR of 10 in the Monster Manual. When I first saw this mini, I thought it was a homunculus, and I think you can certainly use it for that if you like, especially for a wizard who tilts evil. But it's apparently a gargoyle, even though its paint job reminds me a little bit more of flesh than it does of stone. Gargoyles are CR2 earth elementals who generally serve as cruel, sadistic guards for rich and powerful people. Their stat block is in the basic rules. Two gargoyles, named Gargle and Gurgle, show up in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Our next Myconid is the little Sprout here. She pretty much has the same abilities as the adult Myconid, but toned down a bit, bringing down that one half CR to zero. Another ability that both the adults and the Sprouts have is emitting spores that allow anyone affected to communicate telepathically with each other for an hour. So having a little Myconid Sprout as a companion, perhaps, could be quite helpful in a stealth mission. Their stat block is also in the Monster Manual. 
A few of the minis in this set seem to be particularly susceptible to bending, with the Dryad being one of them. Generally, it's the creatures with the thin legs that are the main culprits, but we'll see an exception to this rule later on. Again, heating the legs in hot water, reshaping the mini, and then dunking it in ice water to set generally solves the problem, though you may need to do this multiple times to get it to stick. Dryads are CR1 fey creatures who are bound to a tree, which serves as our home. They can be found in the basic rules. I am shocked. Shocked that they found a null variety that we didn't have a mini for yet. But apparently, this is the first Fang of Yenogu mini from WizKids, and it's just a creature from the Monster Manual. When a Knoll tribe celebrates a victory, sometimes the Demon Lord Yenogu chooses a homecoming king or queen to become his chosen, his Fang. Afterwards, whenever the Fang slays a foe and the hyenas in the area feast on the corpse, as they want to do, they undergo a transformation becoming gnolls themselves. So heroes may be sent out on a quest to destroy the Fang before the local gnoll population gets completely out of control. They have a CR of four, and a gnoll Fang of Yenogu does show up in Rime of the Frostmaiden. So this gets into a bit more spoilery territory. Suffice it to say that the Chardolin dragon here was a gift from one character in Rime of the Frost Maiden to this person in the picture here who will remain unnamed for the moment. It's a construct that otherwise uses the pseudo dragon stat block, making it a CR one quarter creature. If no one looks too closely, you can maybe use this mini as a baby silver dragon too. Or perhaps it could be a dragon-shaped gizmo created by one of your Knoll tinkerers. Our second bullywug is the Croaker, which actually has its stat block in Ghosts of Saltmarsh, which includes an adventure called Danger at Dunwater, which has a heavy bullywug presence. The Croakers are extra pompous, which is saying a lot for a bullywug, as they have the power to weave magic into their songs, and I use that word loosely. They have great ability names too. With their Rooglog song, they can give other bullywugs temporary hit points, and with their Glarpot songs, they can deliver psychic damage, and hurt the con saves of nearby enemies. They have a CR of two. The Durgaloth is one of the few monsters from Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes in this set. They are Yugaloths who are essentially dumb brutes. They don't make particularly good employees, which isn't great for a race known for being mercenaries. But what they lack in comprehension skills, they make up for in sheer destructive power. Despite looking rather dopey, those five sets of claws can do some serious damage, giving them a CR of seven. Here we have a proper dragon wormling, a white one to be exact. We did have another white dragon wormling back in Monster Menagerie 2, which is useful as a pair of them appear in Rime of the Frost Maiden. Gellum and Tizar are their names. Don't expect to tame them and turn yourselves into dragon riders unless you have a very chill and compliant DM. White dragon wormlings also appear in Tales from the Yawning Portal and Storm King's Thunder. We apparently haven't had a Quagoth mini since way back in the Rage of Demons days, so we are certainly due. These are old school monsters who've been around since first edition. Like a few other species, they used to dwell on the surface in relative peace and harmony until those dirty, filthy elves drove them into the Underdark where their civilization, such that it was, fell apart and they became servants of the Drow who have no problem harnessing the Quagoth's ancestral hatred for the elves. Seriously, the elves brought a lot of this on themselves. The Quagoths have a CR2 stat block in the Monster Manual, and a few Quagoths do appear in Rime of the Frostmaiden. This is one of the few minis in this set that could actually be a player character, as Lokatha were made playable in 5e in the Lokatha Rising supplement. I've loved the Lokatha since Marvel's talented Nick Lowe played the Lokatha Gishmil Dothlongren on the Raiders of the Lost Continent podcast. They're a downtrodden, good-hearted, compassionate race. I highly encourage you to check them out as a PC race, though be aware that they weren't as thoroughly playtested as most of the D&D content is. Another foe that you may encounter in Rime of the Frost Maiden is the Ice Troll. As much disdain as I have for gnolls, I have the opposite amount of love for the troll. Trolls' natural regeneration from all but fire and acid give designers a lot of space to create unique and compelling varieties to challenge players. The Ice Troll, though, doesn't bring a lot to the troll table. He does some additional cold damage and has a damaging cold aura that extinguishes flames. That all gives him a CR of 8. 
I think they could be interesting in a challenge that involves having to keep them away from a vitally important signaling bonfire or something, perhaps. The best thing about them is that their hearts have special properties and uses that I'll leave you to discover on your own. Their stat block is in Rime of the Frost Maiden. Rime of the Frost Maiden also brings us a new variety of mimic, one who spits acid, which is really just rude when you think about it. He's also larger than your average Mimic, with a large size base, and he has stronger stats, making him a CR5 creature as opposed to the standard Mimic with a CR of 2, giving you the option of bringing that fun Mimic encounter into the mid-game. This fun-looking creature is a Snow Golem, another riff on an existing monster type introduced in Rime of the Frost Maiden. It can slam you and toss magically frigid snowballs at you, but it's relatively harmless. It's one of the lowest CR Golems out there, coming in at a CR of 3. It has the immutable form of most Golems, meaning you won't be able to turn it into a Parakeet, but it's not resistant to magic as some Golems are. In fact, if you light a fire underneath it, it starts to melt. This fellow is scaled up to a large from its medium size in the stat block. Hey, it's a polar bear, which brings together our two main themes of the set, neglected monster manual stat blocks and creatures that you can use in Icewind Dale. Previously, we had an unpainted polar bear in the Nolzers line, and a different sculpt of a painted polar bear in Spell Effects Wild Shapes and Polymorph Set 2 by WizKids. You can see our review of that set in the eye up there. This is a summonable creature using the Conjure Animals or Conjure Face spell, and it has a CR of 2. I'm shocked that it took them this long to make an Axe Beak Mini, as they're kind of the mascot creature of Icewind Dale. As the land is a bit harsh for your average horse, many folks use a native Axe Beak as a mount to get around between the ten towns. You can purchase a domesticated one for 50 gold pieces, summon one from a tan bag of tricks, or summon one using the same Conjure Animals or Conjure Fae spell. They have a CR of one quarter. I always get the Fomorians confused with the insectile Formians, who aren't even in 5th edition, I don't think. They are big in Pathfinder and Starfinder, though. The Fomorians, like this fella, used to be wise and handsome, but rather power-hungry. They attempted to overthrow the Feywild and failed, getting cursed into this form in the process. And they can pass this curse along to others with their own evil eye. One thing, though, this is another mini that's inexplicably prone to bending. At least mine was. I was pretty surprised to see another Hill Giant Mini in this set. Between Storm King's Thunder and Monster Menagerie 3, we've already had quite a few Hill Giant Minis. If you're looking to get some new stat blocks for your various Hill Giant Minis, Against the Giants in the Yawning Portal book and Storm King's Thunder will both give you a few TVA-approved variant mini blocks to keep things interesting with these big bruisers. The standard Basic Rules Hill Giant has a CR of 5. Let's take a look at this new Hill Giant next to our previous ones. This one's quite different, almost svelte compared to his brothers and sisters here. He could almost be an adolescent hill giant. I didn't quite realize how different they looked until I put them all together. We also get a new stone giant mini, but this one is much more aligned with the previous models than the hill giant was. Stone giants are contemplative, true neutral artisans and artists generally, perhaps the most alien of the giant clans, and they certainly look alien too. Role-playing a stone giant is a bit of a challenge, I think, because they see the world outside their own caves as ethereal and dreamlike, so keep that in mind when they show up in your adventures. Their CR7 stat block is also in the basic rules. This fellow fits in right alongside our other stone giant minis. Again, I'm surprised we got another stone giant in lieu of other huge creatures that we probably could use more minis for. But this is a good sculpt, and giants are pretty ubiquitous, so there are worse choices. The big surprise in this set is this, the Warforged Titan, a creature from Eberron rising from the last war. These huge sized CR8 constructs were modeled after the war machines made by giants centuries ago. In the last war, House Kanath took the original designs and created these to wreck paths of destruction through the enemy armies. They are sentient, barely, with an intelligence of three, but that's enough to follow simple orders. Let's take a hard left back to Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden. 
as the next few rare minis represent named NPCs in the adventure, and I'm going to be very vague in these descriptions to keep from spoiling anything for you. Maud Chiselbone, as her name and appearance may imply, is a hag, specifically a lake hag, which doesn't have its own stat block in 5e, so they use the sea hag stat block instead. She comes with a cauldron that's actually unattached from her base. This is quite useful for two reasons. One, you can always use the cauldron for other setups like encampments or tavern kitchens. And because the cauldron is a rather important magical item in the Rime of the Frost Maiden adventure, you may want to recover cover it from mod. This is a Verbeek, which is a humanoid-looking giant kin that's making its 5e debut here in Rime of the Frost Maiden. They are generally evil marauders who rob people who have the misfortune to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. They can often be found near hill giants and ogres and will often be leading their bigger cousins in battle as they make up in wits what they lack in stature. This mini is on a medium base here, but its stat block indicates it's actually a large-sized creature, which makes sense for a giant kin. They have a CR4 stat block. So I can't tell you too much about this figure. He's a rather funky looking goblin for good reason. If you're using this mini outside the campaign here, he can certainly be a warmly dressed goblin. If you are playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, you'll hopefully learn a lot more about him as you play, but all I can tell you now is that he has a quite interesting story and a good stat block. Grandolfa Musgart is the Grand Dame of the local Duragar clan who plays a role in the Frost Maiden story. As mentioned earlier, she's the one who has the Chardolin pseudo dragon pet that's also included in this set. She's a cunning foe for folks who find their way to her naughty list, which, let's be frank, is just about everyone. And if you have some Underdark adventures of your own with some Duragar enemies, she'd be a good mini to add to the mix, and Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes gives you a ton of stat blocks that you can use with her. Well, here we have a regular old sea hag. As you might guess with her thin legs, she's another one that's prone to some bending. We had an unpainted sea hag in the Nolgers line, and our last painted one was in Monster Menagerie 2, I believe. Sea hags are CR2 creatures from the basic rules who show up in more than a few adventures. They hate things that are beautiful and want to either possess or deface them. Trex, a kobold with some fake wings, is a very unusual kobold, as you'll find out when you meet him. There's a stat block for an Icewind Dale kobold, which is slightly different from the standard kobold stat block while retaining the same 1 8 CR stat block. Snowbound was originally intended to have a mini of three kobolds in a trench coat, which would have been undoubtedly popular, but that mini is being held for a future release, so stay tuned to our Discord server for updates on that. Ravison here is one of the only other minis in the set that could conceivably be used as a PC mini. In actuality, she's a Frost Druid in the Frost Maiden adventure. Frost Druids seek to preserve the Arctic wilderness from outsiders by patrolling an animal form and attacking when they have an advantageous position. They're often accompanied by awakened creatures that they created. Frost Druids have a CR of 5. Our last Bullywug mini is the Bullywug Royal, whose stat block is also in Ghosts of Saltmarsh. The Royal is the largest and smartest Bullywug in the tribe, and usually the best dressed. They come striding into battle atop giant toads, and honestly, where's our Bullywug riding a toad mini? I mean, the Frost Giant riding the Mammoth was a cool premium figure for the set, but the Bullywug on a toad is where the money is. The Royal has a CR3 stat block. Okay, there isn't much I can tell you about this character either without spoiling Frost Maiden at least a little bit. So if you want to stay squeaky clean from spoilers, I suggest using the timeline down below to skip ahead to the Myconid Sovereign. If you're still here with me, Veneranda here is basically a head in a jar affixed to the body of a helmed horror without the helm, both of which are separate creatures. The head in a jar is a CR3 creature with a stat block in Frost Maiden, and the helmed horror is a CR4 creature in the Monster Manual. There aren't too many minis who essentially represent two different creatures. This creature is in a larger base than what you normally get for a regular helmed horror. 
Our last Myconid is the Sovereign. Still not a particularly strong creature with a CR of 2, but she does have a very powerful ability. She can bring creatures back to life as spore servants. They're essentially plant zombies without their original personalities. The Monster Manual has a template that you can apply to whatever creature is brought back this way to represent their particular animated spore servant form. So it could make for a very interesting little story twist. And a sovereign named Plerota does appear in Rime of the Frostmaiden. I'm getting the sense from the internet chat that the Awakened Tree mini here might be the most popular mini on the aftermarket from this set. It's a cool mini, essentially a tree that's pulled itself up by its roots so it can be ambulatory. It has a fairly simple CR2 stat block in the basic rules, but if you have a druid or a bard in your group with the Awakened spell and they have access to this mini, well, you better believe they're going to be bringing along a tree friend any chance they get. Here is the most interesting and heaviest mini in this set. Number 46, the Goblin Battle Wagon. It comes in two parts. First, we have the wagon itself. It does appear in the Frost Maiden Adventure where it's commanded by a goblin with a hawk companion. And where's our mini for that, whiz kids? Some goblins stay inside the wagon and shoot arrows while the leader perches herself on top to oversee the battle. And indeed, you can fit one goblin on top of the wagon, but it's a fairly tight fit. The wagon is pulled by two polar bears who come unattached from the wagon, but all harnessed up at least. In the adventure, your party may want to try to separate the bears from the wagon, so you may theoretically want to keep the two parts of this mini separated, though that does cause one problem. This mini is pretty tough to put together in such a way that it stays together with the polar bears actually standing on the ground for your encounter. As you try to situate the bears, the tusks, and the harness come loose from their fittings. But there is one way to solve this particular problem. If you just glue the tusks and the harness to the wagon with super glue, as I did here, things hold together pretty much just fine. It's still a little bit tough to get the bears perfectly situated on the ground as the harness itself is pretty stiff, but you can make it work. This is an ambitious mini, and I love seeing WizKids trying creative things like this. This is certainly a mini that you can use to make your own goblin or maybe your cobalt encounters much more interesting in and outside of Icewind Dale. In these videos, I like to show the various warbands that most sets provide if you end up getting a brick or a case. In our situation, we didn't get a proper brick or a case, so we can't show you with accurate numbers what kinds of warbands that you can expect to build from your purchase. But let me show you the Myconids and the Bullywug minis together at least, so you can get a sense of how they compare. We did end up getting quite a few duplicates of most of the commons and uncommon minis in our little box, so you can get some semblance of a warband together here. This set is so interesting. When I first started seeing pictures of some of the figures included, I have to admit to being a little disappointed. It's not a flashy set, exactly. I mean, you do have the Goblin Battle Wagon and the Warforged Titan, but the rest of the minis are more functional, and that's what this set really is. It gives you, on the one hand, lots of named NPCs and creatures from Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, so it's a no-brainer if you're playing that campaign, but it also gives you quite a few standard monster manual creatures to expand your monster options for random encounters and the like. Personally, I'm just so happy to get a Lokatha mini and an Axe Beak, and the methods are always useful, and come on, the Bullywugs and the Myconids are great creatures for storytelling. The Megans can be a lot of fun if your high-level wizard decides to make some servants, and the Griffin Hatchling is ready for those players who want a pet. Honestly, in my book, almost every mini in this set has some pretty solid potential. Even, and it pains me to say this, even the Knoll, at least the Knoll Fang, can lead to some interesting quests. So let me know what you think about this set in the comments section down below, and enter to win our giveaway for a booster box of Snowbound Minis. Just remember to be a subscriber when you leave that comment. We'll draw a winner here in about two weeks. The premium figure for this set, which wasn't a Bullywug on a giant toad, unfortunately, but was a pretty cool frost giant riding a mammoth. We reviewed this in a video you can see right there in that little eye. Snowbound is available in most places right now, so go pick up a few boosters for your DM, especially if they're running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Mini booster boxes are a great way to show your DM that you appreciate them. And don't forget that there are two promo sets that you can get for Snowbound, a box of bugbears and a box of lizard folk. Learn more about them in our video, which is right up there in the eye right now. And if you haven't seen our full review of the Elder Dice sets and the amazing 5e GM screen from Infinite Black, be sure to watch our full review of those as now 
now up there in the eye. This DM screen is my favorite one I've ever come across. It is packed full of all the knowledge I need to run a 5e game while staying readable. They pulled rules out of the DMG that I didn't even know existed, and they even include an extra little fold-out two-page booklet that has even more rules that you can keep by your DM screen or stand up next to it to make sure you have even more important rules at your fingertips. Super functional DM screen that I love. And it's only 18 bucks using our discount link below. And their Elder Dice sets with their magnetic grimoire boxes have so much attention to detail that I think you'll be as amazed as I was. Check it all out using our discount link below to get 10% off or use the code GGOBLIN at checkout. There are some beautiful dice, that GM screen, and even some cool D2 coins and more. Go check the link. I promise you won't be disappointed. And be sure you check out the pre-sale going on right now for the new deck of mini animated spell cards. I was going through them the other day to film some more footage and I had forgotten how gorgeous they really are. And they feel so good in your hands. If you haven't picked up a deck yet to try out, I really do recommend them. Not only can you get all the OGL D&D spells, but they even include include cards in most of the decks that have original animations on the front and a place on the back to write in your own homebrew spells or spells from other sources that aren't included in the OGL license. I recommend just getting some tarot sized card sleeves and using a wet erase fine tip marker to write in those spell details directly on the sleeve so you can change them up in the future. They also have animated reference cards for conditions, for townsfolk NPCs that your DM may have to improvise, and two in-game magical items the Deck of Mini, and the Deck of Illusions. These are another awesome way to bling out your games, and they make great gifts again for your Dungeon Master. Check them out now at AnimatedSpells.com. And thank you for watching today. I hope you're staying safe and having a good summer or a good return to school, if that's your thing. We have a ton of fun things going on here that I can't wait to show you. If you're on Twitch, come follow us at twitch.tv slash thegallantgoblin. We have some big plans for Twitch coming up here really soon. Come chat with us on Discord. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Check out our merch at gallantgoblin.com shop and come join our Patreon family at patreon.com slash thegallantgoblin. We love reading your comments and hearing your stories, so stay in touch. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>